In first century Israel, a man named Saul was riding the dusty trail from Jerusalem to Damascus when a blinding light struck him from his horse. His whole life was changed through a miraculous intervention. But that was in the first century. Now, in the 21st century, we can sometimes become jaded into thinking that miracles stopped thousands of years ago. Our story today would have you think otherwise. Let's dive in. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. Yes, and that includes sound effects. I'm Timothy Gregory, and deep in the heart of Liberia, we meet a teenager bound for tribal royalty. When a famine descends on his village, he is suddenly faced with the possibility of death. What keeps him from meeting his maker too soon? That's what we're diving into in this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. Also, you want to stick around because later we are going to give the rest of you an opportunity to enter yet another sweepstakes drawing for an exciting prize. But first, let's get to it, folks. The true story of Samuel Morris. On the dust, groveling at my feet, just where you belong, you will learn to do my bidding, obeying my every command. The command of the great chief. Kabu, you dare wear my crown? <laughs> my father, I-, I was borrowing it. You should put it back. Yes, father. Besides, <laughs> it's much too big for you, little prince. Maybe for now, but soon, father, it will sit right. Is that so? Why, yes, father. Do I not come from a long line of brave crew warriors? And you are a great crew chief who's won mighty battles and slain many enemies. Indeed. I will follow in your footsteps. But there is more to being chief. There is? Right now, the crops are failing. Oh. And there have been raids on other villages and talk of tribal wars, which frightens our people. I did not think of that. There are some battles, Kabu, that are not won with terror and spears, my son. Then how are they won, father? I wish I had the answers. But you are chief. You are powerful. Kabu, can a chief take away the fear in people's hearts or stop the killing among tribes? I haven't met one yet who can, but if I did, I would gladly give him my crown. You would? I am weary of seeing so much fighting and killing. When I am chief, I will find a way. I will do all I can to help my people. You will see. (laughs) I will hope so, my son. But for now, you are much too young to worry about... A young African boy is miraculously delivered from the clutches of death, which compels him to become a leader and inspire a generation. Based on the Torchlighter series, Heroes of the Faith, we bring you the true story of Samuel Morris, right now on Unshackled. I was born son to a crew chief in a coastal village in Liberia, West Africa, in 1873. Mostly our tribe enjoyed a peaceful existence, but a drawn-out period of famine brought a new kind of threat to our community, a form of violence I had never seen before. Ah! Let me go! Let me go! Release him! Silence! You don't issue orders anymore. Kneel, crew fierce! before our great chief. Look at the great crew king now, on his knees before us, just where he belongs. (laughs) No, father, let me go. Why did you raid our village? You have broken our pact. The land yields little food. For your tribe as well as ours. Every full moon, you will bring me a tribute of props and goods. We are not your slaves. Are you not? Leave him alone! Do what I say, and you will get your little prince back. But fail, and he will die. How can we give you what we do not have? My people will starve. But mine will not. Take him away. No! Father! Kabu! Wait! Father! Do not worry, my son. I will come for you. I know you will, Father! Enough! Let's go! Move! My father is a great chief! 
When he rescues me, you will be the one kneeling before him. <laughs> <laughs> you are a brave little prince. That is good. You will need to be. Take him away. Get these captives moving. Month after month, my father and the villagers brought livestock and crops to pay tribute and gain a release. But their chief kept raising the demands. When he did, we captives were tied to poles and beaten, trying to motivate our families to meet unrealistic expectations. As the famine wore on and resources grew even more scarce, the chief set out to make a point. This is no good. What do you mean? We have given you everything. It is not enough. My people have nothing left. Including a prince. No. Bring him out. Father. Kabu. I knew you would come. My son. Quiet. What are these wounds? What have you done to him? Your great chief of a father has returned. But not for you. What? He has failed me and therefore you. No. Say your final goodbyes for you will see your son no more. My son, my son, I am not the great chief you thought I was. I have failed my people as their leader and I have failed you as a father. Remove these crew animals. Take them back to their village, but keep one of the crew slaves behind. This one? Me? Who are you? I am Afram. Good. Let him watch the death of his Prince Kabu and be a witness to his people that we are true to our words. Father, no! My son! No! Prince Kabu, Afram, what will they do? I don't know. Are we going home? Only you. Now step aside. Uh, uh, we are ready, Chief. Tie the prince to the pole. Wait, no. You can't do this to the prince. Let this serve as a warning to your people that no one... If anyone is out there... ...who fails us... Please! ...will live. Help me, father! What is that light? It's blinding! My pants have loosened. What is happening? Run, Kabu. Run. <sighs> And run I did, with the chief and his group of warriors after me. I ran and hid. I trudged through the jungle for weeks. At one point, I fell into a fast-moving river, and it seemed like forever before I was able to climb out. I did not know where I was going or what kind of life lay before me. But my thoughts revolved around that beam of light and the voice that had spoken to me. Had I imagined it? Who was it? What was it? Where could I find this being? I pressed on until I met a familiar face. Oh, Prince Kabu? Oh, I am so glad to see you, Hawa. But this is impossible. What? Did you just fall out of the bushes? No, I walked through them. Kabu, we are hundreds of miles from our village. We are? Yes. We are on a coffee plantation run by Mr. Davis, an ex-slave. I suppose I have been traveling for some time. Yes, you look like you have. Come with me. Let's get you cleaned up and fed. <sighs> that sounds wonderful. Did you escape when the enemies invaded Hawa? They ambushed us while we were hunting. They killed my father. Oh, I am sorry. But what about you, Kabu? How did you escape? I really don't know. What? Uh, it's all very... Well... You are probably tired. We can talk later. For now, let us thank our father that you are able to escape. What are you doing? I am going to pray to God. And who is your God? He is, well, he is my father. Your father is your God? No. Well, yes. Look, tomorrow we will go to a special house. You will understand then. For now, I will give thanks to God for you. Father... Thank you for taking care of Prince Kabu and for bringing him here safely. We thank you for the blessings of your guidance and protection. We thank you. The plantation owner and ex-slave, Mr. Davis, welcomed me to stay and recover and then join the field work when ready. The next day, the tribesmen led me to that special house 
and we attended what he called a Christian service. While I didn't know what to expect, I was surprised at the answers I found. Have a seat. Who is going home? <laughs> Sit down. Miss Knowles, you may proceed. Thank you. Why can't we talk? Shh, just listen. <clears throat> I would like to share a story from the Bible. It's the story of a man who was rescued by God. His name was Saul, and he was on a mission to persecute and enslave Christians. But while he was on his way, suddenly... A bright light came upon him, a bright light from heaven. And Saul fell to the ground and heard a voice from heaven that changed his life forever. Run, Kabu, run. <gasps> that same thing happened to me. Kabu, quiet. It was the voice of Jesus. The voice of the light was the voice of... Jesus! <gasps> Jesus. I beg your pardon? I know that voice. I know that voice! Young man, this is a church. You cannot... It was Jesus! Jesus freed me from my enemies. Enemies that did this to my back! Oh, 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 my. oh my! They have scarred you terribly. I was taken captive by our enemy. They were going to kill me. But then, a light appeared. And the ropes that were holding me were loosened. And then, there was a voice. Run, Kabu! Run! So I ran. I now know it was the voice of Jesus. I know it. He rescued me. Jesus rescued me. From that day on, I started referring to God as my father. I sought his guidance and wisdom and enjoyed being able to pray and fellowship with him. I worked on the plantation and learned English and the missionary teachers taught me how to read the Bible. I could not get enough of it. Still studying, Kabu? Samuel, remember, I have a new name now to go with my new life. Ah, oh, yes, Samuel Morris, named after the man who helped me come to Africa as a missionary. I thank God for him every day. If it were not for missionaries, I would not know of my heavenly father. I am very blessed. Oh, what is it, Samuel? Is it possible to feel happiness and sadness in your heart at the same time? It is. I have learned that my heavenly father can do what my earthly father could not. If my people, even our enemies, could know about Christ, it would stop the killing. It would change the way of the jungle. And we pray for that every day. But th the tribes... They need to know about God now, Miss Knowles. I understand, Samuel, but there are very few missionaries here. We are doing all we can. But I am not. Teach me more about God, Miss Knowles. If you do, maybe I can be a missionary to my people. I've taught you everything I know, answered all your questions. Well, then, who was your teacher? Stephen Merritt. Then maybe I can ask him to teach me. Where is he? He's in New York. A big city in America. But like I said, Samuel, Samuel, where are you going? To New York! But you don't understand. It's on the other side of the ocean. Very far away. I don't see how... My you... people need Christ. How can I be a missionary to my people unless I learn more about God? I'm not sure where New York is, but I will get there, Miss Knowles. And I will find Stephen Merritt, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes was right, because it took just about everything I had to make it to the land of America. Folks, we'll get back to Samuel's remarkable journey in just a moment. But first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 73rd year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. 
Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we are able to share Unshackled worldwide. So in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link if there is one where you're listening or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check to Unshackled and mail it to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, back to the true story of Samuel Morris. Keep going up there, Samuel. Climb that rigging. Get that sail down before we break a mast. You can't stay there much longer, Captain. He'll be tossed into the deep for sure. Good. We'll be rid of him. It was a mistake to bring him on board in the first place. It's clear the kid's never been on a ship. And he's always going on about his father this and his father that. <laughs> so let his father help him now, if he can. <laughs> father, help me. Help me, Father, please. Blasted storm was nearly the end of us. It'll be a while before we can sail again. So you're back on your feet again. Yes, sir. My father has helped me. Your father? I'm sick of hearing it. Uh, Get him to the pumps. Oh, this crony rat? He will be dead if he tries to keep up. He has got no experience. Then show him how it's done. We need all hands at work. We have been at it for hours. Are you questioning me? Uh, all right. This poor rat. What's he mean, his father? <laughs> Unsure, he comes up to me and says, My father says you take me to New York. So I ask him, who's your father? And he answered, Father in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> you mean God? Figured I'd at least get some free work out of him. Or he from you. Huh? The boy's got no seafaring experience. As far as I can tell, maybe he got a free ride and, well... Maybe his father did answer his prayers after all. <laughs> uh, sorry. Ooh. So am I. Rum for all, gents. <laughs> Samuel, I'd stay below, lad. Fake some injury. Your muscles must be aching. The sooner we finish, the sooner we will be on our way. And what's the hurry? Money? God. God? I'm going to America to learn more about God, to learn to be a missionary. That way I can help my people. Now, let's work. Steady and slow there, Samuel. Lots more to do. Let's let him walk. He'll be food for the sharks before his shift is over. <laughs> Samuel, be mindful of him, the Malaysian. Uh, he's an angry one. Causes all kinds of trouble. I am used to threats. Oh, he won't threaten you. He'll just kill you. Just like he's killed many a man. What's the report? We should be ready by morning, Captain. The pumps? Nearly done, sir. The men have been hard at work, and we've done three shifts. <laughs> Except for Samuel. He hasn't taken a break. This entire time? Didn't want one. Says he promised to work his way to America, and work he will. Huh. Interesting. That's the eighth one down now, Captain. This sickness is spreading. <sighs> Not good. Starts with a fever, then tempers flare. Men go crazy. Then give him more rum. Maybe it'll help calm them down. Uh, what are you doing here, Samuel? I have been assigned here, sir, to clean your room. Then you can start on the floor. Ugh. Now look what you did. I'm sorry, sir. I will get it. And don't spill any of that good rum. I think, sir, that God will do more good for the men than rum. <laughs> what do you know? It helps me. Helps me more than you know. Only way I can find peace. What was that? What's going on? Stop! Right where you are! Everyone! Are you mad? It's the fever, Captain. It's made him crazy! Shut up! I'm sick of you! And you! You are a lousy captain! I have been wanting to kill you! And now I will do it! Stop! What? What are you doing, boy? Put the gun down! Step out of the way, boy! No! 
No killing. You're protecting him? To treat you like a rat? God does not want us killing each other. Out of my way! God does not want us to kill each other. <sighs> you do not need to do this. I... I do no want to do this. Pick up the gun and lock him up till his fever breaks. Everyone back to your posts. I guess. Yes, right. yes, Captain. Except you. I want a word with you. I, I, I'm sorry, sir. I only meant to... How did you do that? No. Why did you do that? I did not do anything, sir. God did. This isn't some church, boy, you hear me? This is a godforsaken ship with men, the likes of which God would want nothing to do with. Nothing. Captain, when I was forsaken and at the point of death, God came near and rescued me. It is when we are at the lowest, when we need a savior most. Captain, God is on this ship. Then tell me where, lad. Tell me where he is. I led the captain in prayer as he surrendered his life to Jesus. Then many other crewmates who had seen what had happened with the Malaysian inquired about my heavenly father, and I was able to share the gospel with him. There was so much to be thankful for as we pulled into the New York Harbor in September of 1891. I had finally made it to America, but yet now it seemed there was more work than ever. This is a big city, Samuel, like nothing you've ever seen before. I fear for you that you'll end up in some sort of danger. Captain, I have been a slave in my own country, nearly killed by the enemies of my tribe, survived the jungle alone for weeks, and then... Survived my ship as well. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know who has kept me each time? That I do. Your father. Yes, my heavenly father. And now he's mine as well. I should have no doubt. God will lead you as he has thus far. Yes, he will. I will miss you, my brother Samuel. I have much to thank you for. And I, you, Captain... I will learn all I can about God here, and then return to my people in Africa and bring them to God. I hadn't grasped the size of New York City and the vast scope of residence, but seeing the towering buildings and milling people and carriages rolling through the streets, I knew I needed help. I needed my father's guidance. Father, you have brought me to New York. Please, help me find Stephen Merritt. God bless you, sir, for your generosity. Yeah. May God bless you. Ah, a believer. Oh, th thank you for taking pity on a poor old... Excuse me, sir. What do you want? I want to see Stephen Merritt. Hey, get out of here, you crazy old... Stephen Merritt, you say? Well, you're in luck, my boy. You know Stephen Merritt? He runs a mission not far from here. Now, how's about I take you there for a small uh, fee? Fee? Uh, my father will take care of it. I found Stephen Merritt at the mission. While at first he didn't have time for me, he came back late that evening to find me leading a group of men in a prayer of salvation. I had just been sharing my love for the Lord to these people, but he called it extraordinary. He vowed to do his best to get me into Taylor University in Fort Wayne, Indiana, which, unbeknownst to him, was suffering its own set of trials. More bills. How much longer can the university survive? Sir, I'm Stephen Merritt. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Merritt, I, um... Uh... I received your letter about Samuel. Wonderful. The boy is most extraordinary, sir. Yes, but... The very day he arrived from Africa, I returned to our mission hall and found him kneeling with 20 of our visitors in prayer, leading them to the Lord. That's wonderful, Stephen. He has such a strong desire to learn more and go back to help his people. This university... Is closing down. What? We're in financial trouble. We'll have to close down in a few months. Our students are heartbroken and discouraged. I wish we could help, but we just can't possibly allow... Uh... Samuel Morris, he's right outside, sir. I just don't see how it could work, Stephen. Especially since he can't afford a room and board. 
It's just impossible. But I'd like to meet him and try to explain. How about a few weeks? Even one. He's come all this way. If I could just pay his expenses, I would, but I have a mission to run. All right. Maybe he can stay here while we close it down. We can't offer much, but perhaps we can be a blessing to him. Or maybe he will be a blessing to you. When I started attending Taylor University, I began telling my classmates and local church how my heavenly father rescued me. Soon, more and more people wanted to hear. The dean wrote it down into a book, and it sold so well that the university wasn't forced to close down. I kept studying and sharing my story, but didn't let the snow and cold weather deter me. I should have been more cautious. <coughs> The doctors say it's not good, Samuel. It is hard to breathe. You should have been resting more, but between your studies and sharing your story and trying to lead others to God, it was too much for anyone to take on. Oh, don't cry, Samuel. Save your strength. I can't help it. I'm so happy. What? My heavenly father is calling me home. But what about your people in Africa? Your mission? It is over. God will choose his workers. Others will do a good job. But Samuel... I have trusted my father all this time. And I will trust him now. It was 1893, and Samuel Morris was 20 years old when his heavenly father called him home. Samuel set in course actions and missions he never would have dreamed of. This is a ship going to Africa? It is. Then we will be your passengers, sir. Students? Missionaries, sir. And come on, lads. Missionaries are always welcome to board this ship. Um, tell me, Captain, is it a difficult journey? It can be, but my father will help us. Your father, sir? Our heavenly father, son. I tell you, he takes care of everything. Only a few short years ago, we took on an African boy, you see. And on the journey here to America, we had storms, we had sickness, we had danger. And this boy and his... Taylor University President Reed said, Samuel thought he was coming over here to prepare himself for his mission to his people. But his mission was to prepare Taylor University for her mission to the whole world. All who met Samuel Morris were impressed with his sublime yet simple faith in God. Listening friend, it's possible for you to have a relationship with your Heavenly Father as Samuel experienced. It will be the most important decision you will ever make. If you'd like to know more about this life-changing decision, please call 1-888-NEED-HIM. Or you can get in touch with us here at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Now, we love hearing from our listeners here on the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, so send us your questions, and we'll answer them here. It can be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org, or you can leave us a message at 312-281-1264. Now, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast. It really helps us out. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled in Person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. All right, the prize for the sweepstakes contest is yet another beautiful wooden scripture plaque. The verse on this one is 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, and 6, which reads, The day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober.
This plaque is beautiful, folks, and it would make a great everyday reminder of God's perfect promises. Unfortunately, we are only able to mail this plaque to locations within the United States, so our drawing is limited to U.S. addresses. But if you reside in the U.S., all you have to do to enter our sweepstakes drawing is call 312-281-1264 or email podcast at unshackled.org and give us your name, phone number, and email. That's your name, your phone number, and email. The deadline to enter the drawing will be December 2nd, and we will announce the winner on December 18th just in time to be a great Christmas gift. We look forward to hearing from you. And next time... Okay, Robbie, your turn. Galatians? Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Good job. I'm not sure what it means. If you sow good choices, you'll be blessed. And if you sow bad choices, your life will probably be a mess. Even though Dory Greeson taught her son to obey God, he still struggled with an alcohol addiction. I don't know what happened. I, I never blacked out like that before. Oh, I'm surprised you're alive. Your blood alcohol was 0.28. But there is still hope, even when those consequences lead to a parent's worst nightmare. Hi, Kate. Is Robbie okay? Can I talk to him? Um, Robbie's... Uh... Don't miss part one, the true testimony of Dory Greeson and her family, all on the next Unshackled. Heard in the true story of Samuel Morris were Ryan Priester, Michael Myers, Larry Halliburton, Kurt Nabig, Demetrius Troy, Ryan Kitley, and Allison Voller. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Demetrius Troy. Audio engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, Kylie Hammond. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ. <laughs>